to the National Bible Quiz 2021 Lessons on Introducing Jesus. We're now at Lesson 4. Who is Jesus? Jesus' authority to forgive sins. Now before we get into the lesson, let's have a short recap on the previous one. Look back at Mark chapter 1 verses 23 to 31. Jesus cast out an unclean spirit from a man and healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. What do we learn about Jesus from this? Take a minute and pause the video. Now, I hope you're all up to speed. Here's a question to get your mind thinking before we jump into the lesson. What do you think is your biggest need in life and why? I hope you had a good time talking about what your biggest needs in life are. Now let's look at today's passage which is taken from Mark chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. And when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts. Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier? To say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Now, let's look into the questions for today's lesson. And remember, pause the video and take some time to discuss them. The first question is, Jesus was teaching in a house full of people in Capernaum. Four men brought a man to see Jesus. What was wrong with this man? He was a paralytic. A paralytic is a person who is physically not able to move. And how did they manage to get this man into the home since it was so full of people? They made an opening in the roof of the house and let down the bed on which the man laid in front of Jesus. The next question is, what did Jesus say to the man? Jesus told him that his sins were forgiven. Why were the scribes, who are Jewish religious leaders, displeased when Jesus said this? If we look at verse 7, they thought that Jesus was blaspheming because only God can forgive sins. The next question is, Jesus challenged the scribes with what they were thinking. Which statement do you think would be easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or rise, take up your mat and walk? Well, the answer is both. What did Jesus do and why did he do so? 
If you look at verses 10 to 11, Jesus healed the paralyzed man by telling him to rise, take up his mat and walk. Jesus did this to prove that he has the power to forgive sins. And our last question is, what does this tell us about Jesus? Well, since it's clearly said that only God can forgive sins, and that's exactly what Jesus did, the answer is, He is God. For those of you who don't know, blaspheming means saying bad and degrading things about or against God. The scribes accused Jesus of blasphemy when he told the paralytic that his sins were forgiven. Because in saying so, Jesus was claiming himself to be God. It would have been easier for Jesus to say, your sins are forgiven, as compared to take up your mat and walk, as the former statement could not be proven. However, Jesus proves that he has the power to forgive sins by healing the paralyzed man as well. This shows us that he is God. Let's think a bit more about the passage and the questions that we just answered. Imagine if you were that paralyzed man. What would your greatest hope be when you met Jesus? Of course, you would be hoping that he would heal you and that you would be able to stand and walk again. However, if you heard Jesus' words, your sins are forgiven, how would you have felt? Probably confused? Because that is not what you expected. Maybe angry? Because Jesus is implying that you are a sinner. And also disappointed? because Jesus isn't giving you the healing that you truly desired. The wonderful news is that Jesus proved his ability to forgive sins by healing the man. But that points out that the biggest problem in life for the man wasn't his illness. And the biggest problem for him and all of us is the need to be forgiven of our sins. Now let's think about these few questions. Again, pause the video and take some time to discuss them. Jesus could see that although the man was seriously ill, he was paralyzed, his greatest need was to be forgiven of his sins. How would you have felt if you were the paralyzed man and you heard Jesus say these words, your sins are forgiven? Why would you feel this way? Let's dig deeper. Open your Bibles to Mark chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. Jesus ate and mingled with people who were considered outcasts or sinners, those who were shunned or looked down upon by society during that time. However, Jesus' ministry was to call and save sinners, those who realized their need for a savior and not the righteous, those who thought that they were holy and right with God based on their own religious or moral performance. Would Jesus share a meal with someone like you and me? He definitely would have, for sure. But this leaves us with a deeper question. For those of us who are following Jesus, will we be willing also to reach out to those whom society considers to be outcasts, rejects, and sinners? We would, if we realized that at the end of the day, all of us stand as sinners who need to be forgiven. Read Mark chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. The scribes, who were Jewish religious leaders, questioned Jesus' disciples as to why Jesus ate with sinners and tax collectors, people who were considered sinful. What was Jesus' response and what does this mean? Now, I hope you had a good discussion. 
That's all that we have for this lesson. Before you go on on your ways, spend some time responding to God's word in prayer. And you may like to pray along some of these points. Say sorry to God for some of the things that you may done, said or thought in the past week which are wrong. And thank God for the forgiveness of sin that Jesus gives to all who trust in Him. That's all from us. See you next lesson.